Hello and welcome to another Love Rugby League Weekly. My name's Dave Parkinson. Delighted we've got a full house this week. We yeah. have. Yeah. Rugby League bingo for you, Dave. And you're not actually going to introuduce yourself, is it? I'm fed up of introducing you. I'm Drew Derbyshire, but Dave will edit my name somewhere here. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Here. <laughs> if you can't see already. Um, yeah, full house. There was a crash last week, so I was sat in traffic while you re- you uh, you boys were recording. So, no excuse. Um, no excuse. Yeah, um, and it's good to be back. Yeah, and obviously uh, James Gordon. Huh? Is he gonna? He does it all at the start, though, doesn't he? So it'll gone off uh, by now. Yeah. So I just look silly. So nothing new there. <laughs> Um, so busy all week in, in regards to rugby league. We've got a slightly different setup this week. We've uh, not been able to get in our usual studio, so we're all uh, cramped in the normal office, aren't we? Yeah, behind my desk. Look how big this my desk is. <laughs> I'm six foot five, and I'm behind this desk. <laughs> um, so busy old show as well. Um, let's start off with the Man of Steel awards. So, um, Drew. Yeah. How did you get the big invite? We've been waiting for that for years. I don't know how many people dropped out eventually, Dave. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I think I got, got the invite to, uh, last Friday or last Thursday, and I, I had to let them know by five o'clock. But it, it, to be fair, it was my first Man of Steel dinner that I've been to. It was, uh, I enjoyed it, fully enjoyed it. it. The food was a bit different to what I'm used to as well. Uh, uh, you know there what? No, there was no pie and chips, basically. I'm no. really tempted now. You can't just there leave no it pies. hanging there. Hon- on, like, on. Honestly, and view- viewers might think I'm lying here, but I genuinely, some of the stuff I had, I didn't know what it were because I've never had it before. I had, Wait, I had. Was it Jamie Oliver? Did no, I had. A, I had a, it was three calls, but if you combine them all together, it's probably not. It's probably like a full meal of what you'd normally have at home. Do you know what I mean? Oh, small portions. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, but it's, it's, like, it's quality like, over quantity, surely. Well, yeah, but you can get good quality at Chippy, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, hey, good big mention, but, big mention for Drew's local yeah, Chippy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, no, it was it, it was nice food to be fair. Uh, I had it was some sort of ham. For a uh, starter, pressed ham. Uh, on was that for, pressed ham for the press? Yeah, yeah very good name. Like that. So, so there was no uh, smack bam, pee no, wet? No, none of that. And then for me, we had some. Babby chi- Jed? Uh, basically a chicken leg. Must, must what, one chicken leg? It's only been a babby chicken, but that small. <laughs> but, uh, uh, <laughs> we, we had some. Uh, and, then, and then for dessert, well, I, I've got a very sweet tooth, so we had some nice little chocolate, moussey kind of cake. It was, How many? It was nice. I only have one. Just the one? So one. it wasn't like you, you could go back for more? No, it, it, no, they brought it out to you, Dave. It's not a buffet. <laughs> oh, I just wondered. It's a, it's a, it were a posh hotel in Manchester. You see, you know, you get invited to the posh dudes where me and James have made do with pasties everywhere. <laughs> oh, Kayla, I would have made do with Kay- a pasty, don't worry about that, Dave. I would have made we're, do we're, with we'll, pasty. We'll be man. chomping on our lion bars at Swinton on Sunday. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with the lion bars. Oh, All the curly whirlies are rock still. So, we'll talk about the awards, shall we? Seeing yeah. as, uh, so, what? Go how on. did it go, Drew? It, it, it went great. I thought a lot of deserved winners in there. It was good to see that the w- Woman of Steel award was was brought in after the the uh, debut season, if you like, of the Women's Super League. What a player uh, she is as well, Georgia Roach. I saw her play on on Sunday. Really, really good. Yes, only eighteen as well. Yeah, yeah, just turned eighteen as well. Literally in the last couple of weeks, I think. So. Um, uh, it, it was great to see it. a good trophy as well. Have you, seen, have you seen the trophy? I was well impressed with that. Yeah, very it weren't good. just a shield, was it? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a very good trophy. I think they've learned a few lessons. Whoever's uh, there's, a, there's, there's a bit of a thing going on about trophies at the moment because obviously Bradford got a trophy for winning the playoffs, didn't they? And then there was the trophy for the million pound game. Oh yeah, and that, so there's all these that different. That looked tro- an odd one. It looked like they just stuck it together on the yeah, plane. There's a lot over. of like I think they just got the match ball and sellotaped it to a little. <laughs> Like there's a like, kicking tea. There's trophies bobbing up everywhere. I mean, the one that gets me is the silver salver for the man of the match on Sky, which is is almost exactly like the League Leader Shield, but just a bit smaller. Got a job lot of him, I think. Yeah, That's which it is. is like Dave could have his lobbies in that. That'd be really good. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I see mind. his reflection as he's getting to the bottom as well. You can you can sell. Oh, I need more. You can sell. <laughs> what, you can sell. We're filming this before lunch. All the food reference. So, um, but yeah, but, I mean, obviously Ben Barber walked away with. Uh, I th- I th- still. I, to be honest, I, 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 obviously a lot of people have got their different opinions, but 
I think overall, as, as the season's gone, I think I think he's deserved it. I think it's important not to forget um, them th- first uh, two thirds of the season from him. It was spectacular, and for me, the best uh, overseas signing in Super League since Jamie Lyon. I think uh, two thousand and six. I think he came over. I think um, the thing for me is there was people. There's people criticising Barber winning it. Who were the same people that were basically saying he's far too good for the league and mm-hmm. all that at the start of the year. So it's like you can't you can't win. It's like a typical rugby league thing. And, and let's be honest. I mean, there were three cracking contenders. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've only got to look at uh, John Bateman's stats. Uh, you know, he runs for 1,200 metres more than any other back rower in Super League, and that to me sums up just how valuable yeah. he's been for Wigan. Oh, he's he's, he's been incredible this year, and, and the thing is as well. I know, I know there was a lot of debate last year about him playing centre for England, but he's, he's made he's, he can play centre as well as he plays in the, in the back row now this season. He has done for for Wigan. He can fill fill in them spots. He can play at uh, loose forward as well for Wigan as he has a few times this season. He's he's just a, a one off play. If you look at him, he, he he's he's not as physic physically as big as, as some of the other back rows in Super League but he's just a natural rugby league player he's, a, he's just a gritty athlete never gives up never gives up at all so um, he fully deserved his nomination I, th- I, th- I thought he was a little bit unlucky not to get it I wouldn't have been surprised if he got it um, but Ben Barber for me I've always been a fan of James it. Roby as well though he's the real dynamo at St Helens has been for many many seasons and you almost forget you almost forget about him because he, he's a regular seven and a half out of ten, isn't he? Yeah, we, we, whenever you watch uh, Sintelins and you're always thinking towards the end of the game, oh, who should, who should I give the man of, ma- man of the match to? Sometimes James Roby actually falls out of out that category just because he plays like a man of the match every week. Mm. So so you act, he's actually playing that well. That, you, that Sometimes you, people just brush him aside and think, and look at the likes of Danny Richardson, who's who's had a who's had a blinding game. But Roby just had the same, but he just gets cast aside just because he does it every single week. He is Mr. Consistent. I think I think the Roby comparison is quite similar to the Dream Team comparison in terms of you know people saying why was there no Warrington and Casper players in the mm-hmm. in the Dream Team, and it's like well if you've got your full team putting seven or eight out of ten every week, they're not going to get noticed as much as players who are having nine out of ten every you know every other week because there's players in their team getting 5 out of 6 out of 10 do you know what I mean so it's a similar sort of theory to that I think Barber was the deserved winner um, what do you think watching uh, share comment like tell us otherwise yeah I did. it was interesting uh, seeing the votes were published last right. night so. oh can we move on to this yeah because yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I rem- I've, I've seen a couple of tweets and I think yours was one of them saying about players voting for the mates yeah um, and, and you it, didn't it, seem to be a fan of this either did you no, James it's, it's, no it's, a, it's just a mockery I think isn't it it's, it's, I just it's think it's mockery. disrespectful really yeah. I think I understand obviously banter and you know the rugby lads and all that sort of stuff but I think when you get to this you, when you get to this sort of thing you've got to take it seriously um, you know don't get me wrong I think I think there's only a handful of players that have done it I mean it's not mm. like it was it's not like it's across the board yeah. um, but certainly especially now with it you know with the Man of Steel being adorned with Steve Prescott's name I think you know you've just got to show a bit of respect um, uh, un- for it unsurprisingly I've got a slightly different view from these two uh, and that is well when you get round to a general election the monster raving loony party always gets a few votes well, yeah, I mean, I mean, so I you're always going to get that well, that's fair. I mean, you I get the banter and you, you know for, for for me if 95% of people are taking it serious then you're still going to get a representative yeah, but I think, vote I think 90, I think 90% of Castellan's team did it as a, as a Mickey tape. Well, no, they were, they were picking French players, and there's some of them French players have had really good years. You, we wouldn't disagree at Roman Navarrete, would you? Really excelling at Wigan but in comparison he, to his first year. He's not been like Ben Barber and John Bateman, has he? Well, obviously, in the eyes of his mates in France, then he's had a great year. We were just discussing before we I came said, on camera, Aki Maloudi got, got a vote. And, and, and he's a great player, he's got great potential. But he, 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 you said you told me he played ten games for Doncaster this year. Yeah, so he's yeah. probably, probably played more games for for Doncaster in League One than he has in Super League. Well, the, the one was Danny Addy, wasn't it? Because Danny Addy's yeah. obviously been out all season and he got nominated. Um, um, you see, I've not got, a, I've not really got a problem with it. It's like voting Conservative in Lee. It's just like you, you might as well you've wasted your vote. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, to be fair, yeah. I mean, like, would you rather? I mean, obviously, there's a reason it's got to this point and. 
the, you know, I think it was when uh, Trent Barrett lost it, didn't he, to someone I can't remember who they picked that year. Um, I can't remember. But obviously, because the uh, a media panel used to pick it, hmm. um, and obviously they've got to the point where the players vote for it, and you know you, you can't really argue with the outcome, no, so I'm, it's I'm, not a problem. So I'm it's, I'm I, I suppose the the, I suppose the question yeah. is is do you do the RFL need to publish? The results, but then at the same time, if they didn't publish the results, people will probably cry it was a fix. I think it's good that they publish the results, and I also think it, it you know, it does show that the sense of humour that rugby players have. No, oh, we all have oh, got sense. No, all too often though, it's suppressed at the top level, isn't is it? Is it because sense of humour or is it stupidity, Dave? I, I no, it's sense of humour. A sense of humour. Don't be so serious. I really on the census, but, pretty, but they no, were but Jedi. But it's a pretty serious award, though. Yeah, it you know is a I mean? serious award. You know, it's like what? Because like, what you don't want to happen is what happens if at some point the the manufacturer situation where someone odd wins it, and like someone undeserving wins mm. it, because that in theory could happen. Yeah, but you'd need to go in cahoots with probably half the players in Super League to do it, wouldn't you? Well, well, yeah, but I mean that's not beyond the realms of possibility. You know, you could, we could argue this about electoral commission and all this kind of stuff, but we're heading into well, politics. No, right, or... right, well, I've, I've not obviously calculated every single result, but say, say if all the players who did vote as a, just for the for the mates and nothing else, say if they genuinely believe that John Bateman were, were best player in Super League and they they didn't vote for him, and that that could have been the deciding factor, couldn't it? I'm not saying it would have been because Barber's been fantastic, and I do believe he would have had most of the votes. But stuff like that can happen. I still think coulda, shoulda, woulda. Don't worry about it. There's more serious things to worry about in rugby league. Like, you know, will Toronto carry on in the next couple of years? Now, they've not made Super League. We'll come to that in a bit, by the way. And uh, well, one thing that I do want to talk no, about... Did you not put the stopwatch on, Dave? Because I, I, I was just leaving it as a free... I was leaving that as a free conversation. All right, all right, We're good. about to head into stopwatch territory, so thank you very much. I've got the five minutes lined up. Um, but, uh, so one of the listeners' dogs keeps going mad, apparently, when he's uh, listening to mm. the podcast. Well, beeping. Uh, here, Rover, oh. Rover. <laughs> okay, so we're five minutes in. Uh, Super League semi-final. So uh, you were at both over the weekend. What did you think? <sighs> that the, the the first semi-final between uh, St. Helens and Warrington. That was something special. That wasn't it. It, it had everything that game. And uh, and Danny Richardson added three drop uh, drop goals. And there's not many times when you have three drop goals and be on losing side. No, there but, isn't. I remember uh, Bishop, one other, well, an, a, a former Warrington uh, halfback, he's a former Saints halfback as well, years ago, once dropping five drop goals in a game. I think it might have been for Halifax. Did right. Lee, Lee Brays kick three for Warrington when they beat Leeds? He in kicked a load as well, in, yeah, in, yeah. In one game, yeah, I remember that. That's the only time I can remember there being three. Yeah, fantastic game. Tom Tom Lyon with two tries on his return to action as well. How good were them finishes? Um, very good. He's, he's, an, he's an impressive winger. He's, he's, he's that type of new age winger, if you like, where he's, he's got a bulky frame, but he's also very, very That, that makes well. me think he's going to wear a man bun and stuff when he's got his new age. That's, um, I mean, uh, yeah, the way Lyon finished, certainly the second try, that's like why you pay your money, basically, isn't it? That's why you pay your money for those moments. And um, yeah, he, you know, took that try well, especially given the, the situation that it was, it was in. Can we just have a quick discussion? So, say it's knocked out of. The last six semi-finals that they've been in, uh, they've won the league leader shield. Obviously, you did a piece on it last week, James. Is this season regarded as a as a success for Saints, or is it? Um, is it I, think, I, I mean, I, obviously, there's there's a there's a never-ending debate about you know finishing first in the league and whether that should be remembered or not. Um, but I think ultimately, I think Saints will be pretty disappointed that having dominated the first probably two thirds of the season they've not even made it to one of the two finals I think even if you make it to the final and lose a bit like Casford last year at least they got to the grand final and they lost <laughs> um, so yeah I think the Saints will be disappointed but you know as anyone would be disappointed to, to lose in the semi final I, I, yeah I think I think Attention go on to Warrington, massive respect to, to Steve Price and the job he's done there he's, he led him to a Challenge Cup final Can, just comparing the, the year from di this year to last year, where, where they were finishing in the qualifiers, chalk and cheese. I know, I know they stormed through the qualifiers, but they fi they finished in the bottom four in Super League. They've reached the Wembley. Fair enough, they, did, they didn't get it. They, they just fell short, but they have made another big final. They're in the grand final. It's another big challenge. They'll go into the game as underdogs uh, this weekend, as they did last weekend uh, against Intellians. But uh, 
fair play to, to Steve Price and, and and the job he's done there. I think he's built a, a good culture and the team the team seems to enjoy playing. They're playing with a smile on the face now. They really used the uh, cup final defeat as motivation. I think from speak when we spoke to, when I spoke to him last week, definitely it was they were quite hurt by that defeat. Um, and obviously for Warrington as a club, they've they've got to get this grand final win under their belt. You know, they they've lost three. They haven't won the league since 1955, which is the longest run out of anyone in Super League who's won it before, um, in terms of the overall rugby league champion, if you like, in this country. Um, so I think, if uh, looking at the squad that Warrington have got, if they can get that monkey off the back this year and win the grand final, you know they only need to add one or two players, mm. and they could actually do it again next year and probably the year after, because the back line that they've got now is. You know, yeah. is as they, good as anybody's. Well, they've already made a box office signing, yeah, Blake Austin, Blake haven't Austin, they? Yeah. Uh, he's he's a superstar. He's he's ripped ripped it up in the NRL this year, and and he, I think it I think he will bring a, a lot more than what Tyrone Roberts has to. to it's like Ra- he's, I mean, he's a real out and out half back, and uh, Tyrone Roberts in all fairness is a bit of a utility player. He was a utility player when he came from the NRL. He played most of the season at centre for Gold Coast before he joined Warrington, and he's been playing as a half back. But I think. Blake Austin will will be something special and, and to be fair if Warrington have another another good year like this one in uh, 2019 I think Blake Austin will have a good chance of getting uh, nominated for Man of Steel that is looking forward to next year though yeah. really isn't it you know I mean uh, let, let's uh, with the start that Warrington had to the season the fact that they've come back in the way that they have is it, it, sort of a real mark of Steve Price isn't it yeah, yeah. I mean I think obviously they were impacted by the late start of having you know because they had quite a few players players in the England squad but like key players as well because you know you had and Ireland you had Philbin and uh, yeah, you know, King, and, George King you know, Ireland. You, had, you basically had you had two new halfbacks uh, you had a new halfback partnership sorry Brown and Roberts and Brown was obviously away with England Roberts was obviously new you know you had Ratchford away Curry was away Hill was away Cooper was away Matthew Russell at the time you know so I think they were going to start slow and yeah like I say they've grown into the season pretty well Okay, uh, right. We'll have another five minutes. Sorry for dog barking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apologies, Rover. Oh, Rover, come fetch. <laughs> right, let's have another five minutes then, um, and let's talk Wigan. I want to get this monkey off your back because I've been having a goat Wigan over the last few times that we've done these about falling asleep. Believe it or not, this match kept me awake. I don't know how. Fourteen points to nil. Two tries. I feel like the Two buffer. Good tries. Be- I feel like the buffer between Lee Wigan rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. Well, I thought they played well. Actually, it was. A good, I thought they, yeah. it was a. It was a good game. They were very. They're very efficient in everything no, they do. Yeah, Wigan, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they? Ex- yeah, exactly. They've. Um, I think you just don't like watching Wigan. Uh, if I'm <laughs> honest, uh, I think. Yeah, when he's watching Wigan, his fists scrumple up in front of the skybox and he's, he's oh, don't do well. Don't, <laughs> Blood don't pressure do, tablet. Don't do well, don't do well. And he goes red in face, hot veins start coming out and he's like, don't do well. <laughs> I thought you were doing that then, actually. I thought you, I thought you were starting to change into the, into the incredible Wigan Hulk or something then. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but in, in all seriousness, it was a very, very, very prof- professional performance from Wigan. Castleford were poor. Um, Luke Gale didn't look 100%, I think it's fair to say. Uh, Jake Truman, massive miss of them. Uh, he's, he's, real, he's been a real influ- influential player for them this year. He's, he's played most of the games, he's broken his hand and obviously he won't be going on the England Knights Tour as well because of it. Uh, it was a huge miss, Gale weren't 100%, so the, the, the normal halfbacks uh, weren't clicking, they weren't uh, fully uh, fit. So To be fair as well, I mean, I thought Ben Roberts was particularly poor. Because mm-hmm. if if he had an inkling that his halfback partner wasn't hundred percent, it didn't really help him out a lot because everything still went through Gale and made him quite easy to read. I think well, Daryl Pearl said after the game that uh, Roberts hadn't played much this year, hadn't played much at halfback this year, and and sometimes when when players aren't playing much or they're dipping in and out of the side, then it, it, they, they can't really build up form, can they? Because they'll always just be that little bit rusty when they're coming back into the side. I mean, they could have played. Casford could have played till Christmas and probably wouldn't have scored. Oh, um, Wigan's, Wigan's defence defense. was unbelievable. Yeah. Like, so intense and so ferocious. They attacked um, with the defence, didn't they? Yeah, and it was just like Casford. I think I do. I mean, I, 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 when I think there was a spell in the game in the first half where Casford were basically just kicking it to touch. Mm-hmm. 
uh, each on each at the end of each set and they weren't getting anywhere you know Wigan were always quite comfortably returning it back and because Wigan had the lead they were quite happy to play that mm. game and see it out and that's that's what happened I mean Casford have done well I think to get as far as they have this season because you know obviously the fullback situation for them it's not you know they gambled on Roberts being the fullback and obviously that didn't work out and then you know like you say it's sort of impacted Roberts in terms of his halfback play because he's been being asked to play in you know a couple of different positions and what that's meant is you know like say when they've missed Truman when Truman's out they've not had someone to slot in whereas last season you feel like they had that um, I mean obviously there was other players on the sidelines as well you know that they missed you know Junior Moores and, and Minikin and uh, Jamie Ellis and Minikin were fit I was I was watching this game with my dad and my dad actually came up with an interesting comment so I just want to run it by you and he said is Shenton past it. Because he, he looked really. I'm not sure. sure. I'm not well, sure about I, I that. I think I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. He's not I mean, Shenton's about, never been Gil, really quick, has he? Shenton's Gil, never been. Yeah, Gildart got one over Shenton. There's no doubt about it. Last week, Gildart was really good in defence. That was one of the best performances from Gildart in defence. I rate Gildart. I yeah, really yeah. like him as a player. Brilliant player, and but his defence was sharp. He bundled Shenton uh, into touch a couple of times, and uh, I just think. Well, I don't think Shenton's passed it by by any means. I think he's still a super. Uh, quality play don't get me wrong but um, obviously Gildart is a, is a, is a, a real promising prospect in, and I, I genuinely believe he'll be in England international in the next couple of years a senior I, international I think the one for me was was probably on the other side the only real chance Casford had in that second half was on the other side and it, uh, it was what Wardle was playing centre, wasn't he, mm. rather than Minikin? And it was like that the forward pass into the corner, wasn't it? And it was like you sort of feel well, would it have been a different outcome if Minikin? I know Wardle played a lot of centre when he was at Huddersfield, but he's more of a back rower. I think he's more a second row player. Yeah, and honestly, I think yeah. you know in that situation, if that had gone through the hands of Minikin, might it have been a different outcome? But I mean, you know, like I say, it was uh, it was Wigan's it was Wigan's game, and they they were far better. But I think I mean I wrote uh, over the weekend. I still think Casford deserve a lot of credit for um you know for finishing top four again and um and being in the mix you know in them in the big semi-finals so we're not going to choke choke us tag at both castleford and st Helens, no, are we not? i think it'd be unfair on on castleford certainly because i think they're punching above their weight massively in the league at the moment sorry you're over <laughs> okay um right let's move on Million pound game. We might not actually need five minutes to sum this up, by the way, because it was just a tale of three penalties. You had. Uh, well, you go through the tries first, Dave. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that won't take very long. In fact, there we go, we've done. Um, but, you know, you had uh, Jared Samet landing a 30 metre penalty in the first half, Gareth O'Brien equalising after about 10 minutes of the second half, and then um, uh, Buchanan gives away a penalty. Jared Simon slots it over. That's just telling part of the tale, really, though, isn't it? 4 2. And I have to admit, considering that, you know, I have had to go at Wigan for the, the, the boring rugby that they played. 4 2, you'd think, what a dull game. But I really enjoyed I was on the edge of my seat. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I much prefer to watch a 4 2 than a, a 40 38. Oh, I do like you? those as well, to be no, fair. I, no, I, I, I can't stand it when, the, when there's. When, if both teams have scored more than 30 points, something's wrong, I think. But I think. I, I, I really I was really engrossed by it. It was really entertaining, and it was like I think um, you were just expe- it was almost like at the start of the second half you thought yeah Toronto were going to start turning the screw and probably run away with it, but then obviously the more time went on, you were like you know what's happening here, and really I mean neither see the neither team really looked like scoring a try, did they? And that's really interesting because both of them are two top scoring teams in the championship. Both of of, of you know scored well in excess of 200 tries this season and yet there was very few chances that were created try scoring chances I mean, we, should, we should give credit to London I mean they're trying to get over four times and they were held up four times there was that one where Alex Walker got under mm. um, I can't think who it was was it Ackers that he got yeah. under they were a fantastic tackle un- unbelievable yeah. tackle and uh, I think it's come out that he played with three dislocated fingers and one of them bro- and a broken thumb or something and it's just like it was a, it was an unbelievable performance from London to say that they were real underdogs everyone was talking about Toronto in Super League you know Toronto were coming out saying we're going to play around Europe when we get promoted sort of thing and London have just ripped up you know all them plans and, and done that and London are probably in a situation now where they probably weren't expecting to go up themselves and they've now got a little bit of a situation where they've got to prepare for Super League next season both on and off the pitch bearing in mind that 
the team that finishes bottom gets relegated and obviously mm. that'll be certainly foremost in London's mind they've got a huge opportunity now to to establish themselves in Super League again but they've got to do it quick because relegation's back I think a lot of people as well um, they kind of like kind of balked at London didn't they initially because they, they were transported into Super League when it first came about they've won this promotion out of their own volition they've done it the hard way they finished second in the championship they finished fifth in the qualifiers they've had to go and put the air miles in come up with a great performance um, what a job Danny Ward's done oh he's, he's, he's done a magnificent job and he said in his post-match uh, interview that a lot of players left last year after after Andrew Anderson went to and joined Warrington all the players left a lot of experienced players but instead, instead of bringing people in, people who they know could do a job in the championship, they actually uh, promoted the youngsters. And what a season Daniel Armarsh is at. He is one top player, him. Yeah. He's, he's just got, turned 20, he's hasn't he? And, and then obviously Walker at fullback, special player. Probably needs to bulk up a little bit. Um, but he's you, could be throw, you could throw that at the other Walker at Leeds, though, uh, as well, couldn't well, you? Yeah, 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 of course. Um, fair shot. Jared Summit, though, for me, um, stood well, out. His, his game management is... He's second to Nomri. Yeah, they, they really squeezed Toronto at the end, yeah. didn't they? The last like, 10 minutes, they it, it really just, squeezed it. He was constantly calming the players down when they needed to, and he and was just saying, just hold on, calm down, we'll, we've got him here. And, it, it, and Sam just provided that level head, and I think that's what brought Toronto all through. I, and, I, uh, London through. I was, thinking in the, I was thinking in the second half that it got to a stage where I was thinking, why aren't either team taking a drop goal? Hmm. Because I thought Toronto, you could sort the, the more, as soon as it got to an hour mark, you were sort of thinking, how's anyone going to score a try in it? And obviously Toronto had enough time, and I know it would have been really, I suppose it's easy to say in hindsight, but I was thinking at the time, it's like, if you knock a goal over and make it 4-3, <laughs> at least the next time you're up there, you can knock another mm. one over and make that, it 4-0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know O'Brien had that, he, had, he took a difficult penalty that he missed. Um, and that that's interesting in itself, because that shows how good London were that when they got a penalty what was it on the halfway near enough 10 oh it's 40 metres out 10 minutes from the side that instead of kicking it to the corner and having a go at them for six tackles at home they went for the goal they were made up them American football fans that would have gone watching it because <laughs> they're used to getting up for field goals aren't they yeah, so yeah I mean a great match and you know what like I said on Twitter afterwards it's what it's all about it's what happens on the pitch forget all the nonsense outside the, the money the commercial the broadcast it's ultimately the reason why we all love rugby league is for that 80 minutes on the pitch I think I think London are going to have to improve the squad ball for next year and buy a couple of players Sorry, I don't know whether you need to say that again. <laughs> don't repeat yourself. Just, just, we'll go BBC Two here for a minute. I just, I just, I just think uh, Toronto, uh, London. No, I keep saying Toronto, London. Well, you might as well say Toronto. They, that's all we ever heard of in the build-up. Uh, Danny Ward kept re- his, his council quiet, didn't he? You yeah. know, and, and they did the job. But, but I do think London might have to bring in a couple of players ahead of next season. Oh well, I mean that's that's yeah. that's like quite that's part of the course. Yeah. That, that is part of the course. Yeah. But I also think that he will be. He'll be loyal to some of those guys oh, yeah. that have got him up. He should, he should yeah. be. He should be. I, I mean, there's a lot to be said about continuity, and I think they've, they've I shown agree. that with the Hend- you know, obviously, like you say, from last season, they've kept that continuity, and that's what you know. If you look back at Daryl Powell at Featherstone, he did that at Featherstone where they kept continuity between players and they improved. He's done it at Castleford where they've improved. So I think if London can maybe look at adding three or four players around what they've got, um, and there will be players kicking around because I'm sure there'll be players that are leaving. You know, maybe maybe even Toronto that would probably do a job. They might. Obviously, London's attractive to players from the NRL, um, but it, it, it's a tall order. I'd imagine they're going to end up. They'll be favourites to finish bottom next season. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, I won't spend too long on this, and it's not just because Lee were involved in this final and got beat, but the Championship Shield final. It was the, the really the trophy that nobody wanted to win. We ended up with special dispensations in the week where loan players were allowed. To play either. Um, lots and lots of injuries for both clubs. Cut threadbare by various various things that have gone on. Um, but they got out. They got it out of the way, and um, well, Featherstone's finished with the trophy. I just feel so, so sorry for uh, Kieran Purcell at the moment, Dave. Um, how is he going to do his job when he's only got nine players turning uh, up for training? I got an interesting, or I saw an interesting tweet from, of all people, Alan Kilshaw, which actually reminded me of something, because I know that you've been quite forthright in your views that uh, Lee should never have been in a position where they didn't have enough players mm. to, to name squads. They started the season, I remember this now, they started the season with a reserve team. Mm. But that reserve team, 
for one reason or another, was never set to play together. It never played together. But they never why, got on why? the field because other teams pulled out of the competition. So you started off with like a weight field in there and what have you. So I find that hard to believe. So no, so. no, no. It's true. I do. It is I true. Do. It is true. They've had they had a squad of twenty players. So they've had to release so many of those players back because otherwise they're not going to get a game. So what's the point in keeping hold of them? Because at the time, it yeah, was, but they, they knew that at the start of the year that it wouldn't be a pr proper reserves league. No, it was still going to be. It was still going to be a reserve league. There was twelve no, fixtures well, in well, the well, calendar. Well, we're going to be playing reserve fixtures. Halifax have been playing reserve fixtures. There was twelve fixtures in the calendar, yeah. and none of those clubs they, they cancel games. Okay, maybe Lee cancelled one or two as well. I don't know the full facts in that, but you couldn't keep twenty players on the books when they're not playing. So they've had to be released, and I'm sure that Rochdale picked a couple up as I, well on the way. I, I mean, I still think. I mean, regardless of that, I still think it's a poor show from from Lee really, and and, and same from Featherston that because the bottom line. Well, yeah, for, the for bottom the, line is a, a lot. Of, a lot of the attention at the moment is on Lee because obviously they only had nine players. But Fev, let, let's let's be real, like Fev. Fev have, have they fielded 17 players throughout this championship? No, they've been playing 50. They played 15. Well, they should get that started. They've yes. been playing 15 every week, apart from obviously on Saturday. But ultimately, if they'd have been in the qualifiers, they'd have had 17 every week, and that's why yeah. it's a. That's why it's a disgrace. They would have had more than 17. They would have had. Yeah. That's the, that's, to that's the difference, though. And this is what I keep getting fund, at. But, but, but because for me, it's the funding's for next season. They've already had the funding for this mm. season. So they're not getting any less money now than they would have got if they were in the qualifiers. Do you see what I mean? The funding that they'd have got this season, they've already had. The funding cut is for next season. But these so, were on the, t the, the players that had multi-season deals, well weren't they? No, but that, so I understand they can, that. So they can't afford to pay from I, I, next season, I, I, I cutting the cloth. I understand that, but at the same time, I just think, you know, to, I think it's it goes to show that maybe rugby league's worried for too long about upsetting the teams that are on the sort of fringe of the top flight when the reality is this. You well, what I mean? I've, I've said it. You know, it's all right. All these super league clubs posting profits. How many are truly making profit? Mm -hmm. If you took that million pound or whatever the funding is from the Sky deal out, how sh how many of these super league clubs should be spending up to the cap of two well, million pounds? A lot pounds? of people rely on, on a lot of rugby league teams rely on millionaires, don't they? They do. But I think I mean that, that's no different to any other sport, though. I mean, football's the same. I mean, yeah, the well, only you can't reason... compare no. football because football has this massive TV deal in place anyway. Which yeah, but that's what, yeah, but that's league. what Sky is. That's what rugby league's got. Just the same. If you no, it's not just the it's same. It's you know, not, it's, it's like there's, a, there's about a, mil a billion pounds difference. What, in that. what, no, what have we seen? So the spend that the football team spend is a lot greater than what the rugby team spend. The, rugby, the Super League team spend what's realistic yeah, but, in what they receive from Sky. Football have got the draw as well. Like, I don't, I don't, if you look at Manchester United, they've got a kit deal with Adidas for, is it 75 million a year? Yeah, I understand, no, I understand what you're saying, but what I'm saying is... So they've got that draw, whereas, no, t whereas rugby league teams that, are what, struggling to even find no, kit manufacturers for but, providing free kits. But what I'm saying is... I don't think you can't say that if you took the sky money away from the Super League teams that they wouldn't run because that's the same that would apply the same in any sport. And I still think there's decent there's decent businesses in Super League that okay, they might not run at a profit or they might not survive without someone behind them, but there's still you know, you look at you look at Leeds, you look at Warrington, you look at Wigan, you look at St. Helens, these are serious organisations that are well structured that would be able to, in some form, stand on their own two feet with or without that money. It's all about cutting your cloth isn't it and I think too many too, too many teams to kind of reach for the stars when it's not sustainable well, Lee, I would sooner see a sustainable league a sustainable well, set of clubs I, than ones you, you, we can't just keep going lurching from one crisis so, to another well, Lee, you could Lee level this example, at Lee Lee are a good example of that because so just, Lee, have, Lee have obviously spent I mean obviously Derek come in and spent all his money which is fine and you know he's done that but that's this isn't the first time it's happened to Lee because oh, it's every it couple of years, 10, to be honest. Ten years ago, well, Arthur when they Thomas. Got, when they got relegated, after, when they got relegated and then reprieved. Arthur Thomas. Was, yeah, there was um, a bit of an issue. Well, but then they had the begging balls out, and then weeks later they were signing Bob Bezic and a few other players, and you're like, you know, there's no sort of. It's a bit like Salford are sort of getting there. I think now they've cut their cloth a little bit, but they're only. Well, they're, they're not. On, they're, they're not really because they're up for Ma, sale, but, Ma won Kukash brought Jackson Aston yeah, and Joey Lawson, didn't they? But ultimately, you know, and, and obviously, witness take a lot of flack. But if you think witness would always have been able to put a team out, yeah, they've been terrible. 
this season and got relegated. Yeah, but you've got those but extra players to call upon. There's yeah, that whole but structure, but, 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 isn't behind with this? But this is a club is relatively sustainable compared to Salford or compared yeah. to Lee. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? That, that was the example I'm making. But obviously... Are you doing the witness for Super League no, again no, here, no, by no, the way? Not, no, they deserve to get relegated. But what I'm saying, Dave, but, is... But, what but, I'm but, saying but, is but, that the, there, is an, there is a business model there, but the problem you've got is that... The first, obviously, it's rugby, and as it should be, it's the team on the pitch that determines where you sit in the league structure. And I think, like, you know, witness running, what you've got to do is, it's like Halifax is another good example. Halifax, Halifax are is, superbly you know, run. Halifax, with what they... Halifax are run really well, sustainable. They're developing players, they, they've got a lot of British players, they've got the reserves, they've got the facilities, whatever. And they have it, they could have done what Lee've done, they could have spent money if they had it and gone a boom and bust but what they've done is Halifax have stayed steady and they've steadily grown and that's what rugby league needs to encourage rather than the situation where a millionaire can come in and, and spend a load of money and then get bored after five years because I think and that's one of, I know witness at the moment is I think my, my understanding is uh, a couple of the owners at Witness want to sell um, but they don't want to sell to someone who's just going to come in and, and sink a load of money in that in two or three years they're going to pull out and it's all going to collapse Drew, you were going to say something there. You were trying to fit in, so we'll just ignore that for a second. No, I was just saying, James was saying witness is sustainable, but I'm, I'm sure I read that a couple of the signings ahead of the qualifiers were brought in just by sponsors alone. Yeah, they, not, were, they, were for, they, were for, they were for that, but the club wouldn't have signed them players without the sponsor. Mm. That's the point I'm making. Whereas, you know... To buy players with money that you're then going to withdraw. Like, witness wouldn't assign them players if the money wasn't on yeah. the table. You know uh, We've we, I mean? we seen it with um, Sheffield Eagles a few years ago. They made the qualifiers. So I think it was it was it in the first year. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a story on yeah. this though because you're going to say that they went boom and bust as well, aren't you? Well, they went. They went full, full time, time in, yeah. the year after, didn't they? Yeah, and which then... was all which was all going to be paid for by uh, sponsors who were coming in, yeah. and all to do with them getting the ground. The ground got delayed. That, that sponsor pulled yeah. out, so it left them with a big hole because they'd already committed themselves. So, mm. you know, that's another example of somebody reaching for the stars um, and yeah. ultimately ending up hitting the ground. I think the bottom line is is that. For clubs to operate successfully in a manner that you, you know, like what I don't know, like what you would deem acceptable in terms of like not boom and bust or not relying too much on TV money, is the money's got to be spent outside of players as well. Because I think the, the trouble is, is you find you know you find it solved and maybe it lit. Oh, way it's, too much has been yeah, spent on you look players. At all the that's all the no credit. All the money that not discrediting players, yeah, by the way. All the money that Kukash or or Derek pumped in. How much? Ninety-five percent of it went on players, and they've not invested in the infrastructure around. Whereas if they'd invested in the infrastructure around, it might work. Like, you know, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to bring witness up as an example, but if you look at, I will just at, come back though and say Lee did have a reserve set up, ready to go. Well, it's fallen apart now. Well, oh, yeah, didn't I mean, that happen might have gone for other I mean, reasons. Yeah, you know, reserves things probably a different debate. But if you look at witness, so witness would you know went into administration and then Steve O'Connor bought him out of administration and he invested in the youth development and the academy from the day he started till now so that's 10 years they only they were in they were in championship for what the first four five years he was there but he still invested in the academy and they're now starting to get to a point where witness could field a relatively competitive team in the championship with products of their own academy and that is good for their the sustain witness probably their place in the grand scheme of things is probably as a championship club, as a, maybe as a mm. top championship club, really. And you could say the same for Lee as well, and, yeah. in the scheme of but things. But the thing is now, is Witness are at a point where if they can maintain what they've got now, Witness can produce their own squad year in, year out, which without is, spending loads of money on Which players. is cheaper, like we, we were talking about the other week, because you were saying about and, and younger you, players. And, and you yeah. only have to look at Wigan, you it's, look at Wigan, you look at Leeds, you look at St. Helens, the three most successful teams in the Super League era are all based on bringing through their, on their infrastructure, having the academy, having the young players come Which again... Uh, it's, it's, I think it's absolutely frightening that to, to think of how many players have fell through that trap at, in Lee, in the turn of Lee. Who were Lee lads playing for East the best Miners, examples, Richard, West the Orton and all, all all them who were playing for these who have not got a chance simply because the club don't have. I will yeah, not Australian. No, I will throw I will throw it out there as well though in that a lot of players would like to sign elsewhere first. 
Yeah, but then the, if yeah, you look, because yeah, if you look at it, if you look geographically, and Salford have yeah, this issue as no, well, no, wait, wait. so they get like perhaps third choice no, because the top players excuse, will go and sign for Saint no, 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 they'll no, sign that, for Wigan. No, it's not. It's reality. No, no, it is, no, no, it is no, right. It's reality because no, you're right. They'd rather sign Luke at Witness. Luke at Witness. Some of the players at Witness. Witness now. Yeah, yeah. But Witness now have the two league debut. Or oh, have made the Super League debut. You won't be making it next year, but they have made the, the play first team rugby. Yeah, but I, I, you look at you look at where sort of it, it goes in terms of like Lee. I, I thought they were building an identity really well, even with the what Derek was doing. And then I think the, the whole I think the way Martin Ridgard was treated was the catalyst to it all. Falling apart. I honestly believe that because I think they just they were. They, I thought they did a really good job of, and and this is where it wasn't just about the players with Derek. I thought he'd done a really good job of getting the town behind them because they got to a point where they used to average you know nearly three thousand, didn't they, in, in championship, mm -hmm. and then that had gone down to like less than fifteen hundred. Yeah. But then it's and obviously yeah, winning helps, but he drummed it up a little bit. And obviously you know people don't like the way Paul Rowley's teams play, but there was a little bit of pride there. They had a few Lee lads in there, and you know everyone was there. There's a lot of Lee lads at yeah. one point. I, I think know, the that, 2014 but, squad had like 14 players from Lee Miners. And, and obviously you've got to you know you've got to improve and enhance your squad. But I think Ridyard is the if you could sort of personify. Lee's sort of demise I think Ridyard is the prime example where he was a good enough player that they farmed off to someone else he did well for somebody else they they cut him out and I just think they lost a bit of that soul to them and all of a sudden it then just became a vanity money project and then they brought all these players in it took they were a good team eventually but it took them five or six weeks to gel and by that time they'd already lost too many games to make it in the top four it's interesting it's interesting and uh yeah, it's definitely a point that I think we're going to come back on. I know, I know what Dave's saying about in terms of like if there's a young lad in Lee, the chances are we're going to, going to sign him. But then Witness are in the same boat. Yeah. If there's a young lad in Wit, like you know, look at Richardson and Percival are both Witness lads this, in the St Helens team. This is where you could also question: Is it right to actually have an academy because they're being hoovered up a, a, a Lee better place, Featherstone better place to do to act as a catch-all club but, after the but, likes of Leeds get rid of them at having, nineteen twenty. Which is which potentially, yeah, but then you could say the same about Witness, but Witness are doing it the way where they're bringing through their own place. Because the thing is, if clubs don't run academies, the player pool's getting less and less and less. So it's like, say, say Witness have got lads, Witness may have lads that are 14 and 15 that, having been either rejected or discarded by Wigan or Saints or not being deemed good enough, might walk away from the game. Whereas because of that Witness... But you could, you could also argue that, and, and, and I've sort of seen it with my own eyes, with the scholarship system that's being run by Super League clubs, I think it's completely wrong because they just hoover all the talent yeah, up, yeah, yeah, and then, then they, they get they released, am. and because they've been lauding it around their amateur clubs, they don't want to go back yeah, because they yeah, feel yeah. like they've failed. So yeah, that is I, I issue. personally feel that they should let the amateur clubs do the job and only pick it, up at a later date anyway. Is the is there an argument for having almost like a draft type system I know I'm getting really revolutionary here but you know like it, obviously in, in the NFL or in America or whatever you know a lot of the American sports do this where they have a big the pool of players <laughs> all the pool of young players coming out of college are all basically picked one by one by all the clubs in a certain order given that all these clubs are so concentrated in the same area and they're all, could you not just do something where the academies are almost run centrally yeah, then and then each year when a player gets to 18 or whatever the clubs could bid for him and, in an order and you know so like if you know I don't know so if like Jack Walker was in and, and Danny Walker was in you know the teams that you'd, you'd pick them in order do you know what I mean and then they'd become no, part of that I disagree club. with that because that takes where right, take Wigan as an example that but they've got, they have got the best academy and they've, they've had the best academy for years, um, and if if you went to that draft system, I don't know that the players won't grow up in that Wigan culture. People people know the Wigan way from an early age, uh, so by the time they're in the first team, they know what's expected, they know how to play, they know the systems, and, and that's fine. And I, I'm completely on board with that. And I, I'd rather it was like that. But what I'm saying is, 
we need to get to a point where clubs don't have clubs have got to have an academy. Uh, it's got to be a requirement to have one. Different age groups as Especially well. Especially the Super League, more, it's got to be Super League. Different age groups as well, though. You get better year groups coming through than previous years, so you might get more talent coming through. Mm. Like, for example, the under 17s for Lancashire this year defeated Yorkshire 52 points to 8 at the weekend. Now, that is just. Uh, I've not seen a result like that at that level for years and years and years. So, this suggests this current under 17s crop of players that's coming through in this county where we're filming, well, okay, maybe not Cheshire, but you know, but you know, um, in, in Lancashire, th- there's a huge wealth of talent that the, needs to be honed, really. I know what the, the big issue is, of course, is the drop off, isn't it? It's the players that are picked off, and, and you are you're right in what you're saying about. Lee Featherston or whoever hoovering up, you know. So if someone gets released, you know, Chris Atkins is a good example. <laughs> he got released at Widnes when he was when he was too old to play nineteens. He ended up he, he played at Whitehaven for a bit, went to Swinton, and obviously now he's made it back into World KR. And I've said this before: how many players are there like him? There's big stories, have, isn't there? That like have that? dropped out of a Super League academy and then just being lost to the game. Mm-hmm. And I think I think Jewel Reg was sort of. I think they were half thinking of Jewel Reg. I think that was the theory behind Jewel Reg was that might encourage your leads to keep on someone who's nine, who's twenty, and then Jewel Reg in with Hunsley. But like you say, if you can get clubs that are quite happy to just sit there and hoover up these players, then maybe it's just it's almost like a reserve pathway. You have a pathway to get him from being a kid mm-hmm. to the first team. Well, how about creating a new pathway so that when you get released, you've still got a pathway to get to semi pro. Or get back into full time pro. Oh, you know, oh yeah, because that, that's there's, the other there's thing. There's another isn't lad, um, the lad at Keithley I've spoken to a few times, uh, Davy the winger. Um, he was at Cars, he, he was at Warrington for a little bit, and then he got released. And obviously, he's now playing at Keithley, but obviously, his long term aim is to get back into into the Super, into Super League. And I think that for me is the main thing. I think you've just got to look at. I think the, what you've got to say is that Super League clubs need to be running an academy, and I think that's where. You know, with all due respect to Salford, you know, because ultimately rugby is about what's on the pitch, and that's fair enough. If you look at if you look at what Salford bring to the table in Super League at the moment, it, even though they're better on the pitch than say a witness were or or Halifax, they they're not contributing a great deal to the it's, game. It's, it's, that, it's that when um, they, were, they were they were going on about. Uh, injuries at Salford um, just ju- just before the, the regular season finished and he was on the knees they had 17, 18 f- available players ju- ju- to play so they were struggling for numbers they're a super league side not to have an academy yeah, I think so that, that's exactly why you're short on numbers because you've got no one to draft in yeah and I think and the, what, what, the, what, do they, what do they expect to do just like the RFL alone yeah. to sign a, a player from New South Wales Cup halfway through season and, and that'll be it and, and just just keep bringing players for Australia in and well, on, this is uh, why short term deals this is no, why you need, a, you need an academy that, i seen a piece uh, a, a few months back and, and they let because they've got a category three academy Salford which is a Basically, uh, is it it's a college. college college side, isn't it? Well, but so of Lee, but they can't call any of those players well, up because they're not no, on pro uh, contracts. Yeah, ex- no, exactly. But why have one of them and they're letting one of them players um, sign with the not sign but train with the first team to get that first team experience? Do you really think one of them players is going to come through just in that in that college system? The the thing for me, and and it's not so much a criticism of Salford or anything like no, that. No, it's, it's, it's the the thing for me is if you look at if you look at you know again sorry to use witness I use witness as an example because that's the the club I know most about. If you look at how witness spent their salary cap this season, <laughs> they were in their their salary cap spend is impacted because of the infrastructure they've got around the club. So because they've got I think they had twenty two players under nineteen last season because they're paying them twenty two players. If you think of how much money they're getting, that might be a Jackson Hastings for Salford. And I think the thing is, if you're looking at the danger you've got, is what if Witness or Halifax or ever turn around and say, you know what, we're not going to bother, we're going to do exactly the same as Salford and just spend our money. Toronto, I know it's a different scenario with Toronto, but Toronto's another example where Toronto are just pumping money into the first team. That makes it more difficult for businesses trying to be sustainable because they can pump all their resource into the first team 
Whereas Halifax, whoever else, are pumping the resource into the academy or the reserves or whatever. And it's like, that's where I think it's got to start becoming mandatory to do that because teams are getting it. It's, an, it's almost, an, it's not their fault because it's not against the rules at the moment, but they're actually getting an unfair, it, it's an unfair advantage. It's a competitive, um, what's the word? It's almost like a competitive I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm going to like, cut yeah. your words off there, yeah, then. Just I have, like, just, I have a think what I'm trying to say, I do. I have an idea. I'm just w w um, sort of quite aware that people will be watching this and they'll be thinking they'll be missing EastEnders so, uh, <laughs> or Coronation Street or something. So let's let's get back on, yeah. on track. I really, okay, appre yeah. I really appreciate that chat, though, because it's one that... And I can feel I think, passion. I think we need to start the passion's doing great. I think, I think we need to, to start doing rugby league shorts. I think I think, I think um, yeah, just cut him we up. Can, we can have like quite a few. Like uh, we can have discussions about reserves. About transfers. there's all kinds of things, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. So, so anyway, yeah. let's move on. League one promotion final. Nice trophy and all. Bradford win it. Hat trick for Jai Hitchcock, who isn't one of their own. They brought him in from Super League this year. Mm. Yeah, Bradford. Uh, you know, obviously Bradford got there in the end. You know, everyone expected them to get promoted. You know, probably nobody was probably expecting them to not win the league. Um, so fair credit to them for sticking at it and, and getting through. And I think they'll be competitive, obviously in the championship. It'd be interesting to see who they who they might bring in. It'd be interesting to see whether. Um, you know, will they will they get any interesting dual reg partnerships, perhaps with Leeds next season, or you know, or with with other Super League clubs that might improve their quality, the quality available to them? Uh, it'd be interesting. Have they still got this partnership with Toronto? Because obviously they're in the <laughs> same league next season. Yeah. Well, they've ended up with like Johnny Pownall there this year, for example. Yeah, haven't they? Yeah. Is it, was did Laithwaite go there and got injured? He yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Laithwaite broke his leg again. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, so he's been so unlucky in his career. Yeah. So know. yeah, it'd be interesting. I, I don't imagine they'll be. They might have had Sidwell as well for a couple of games early. yeah there, there won't be any love lost between them uh, but well done to Bradford uh, they did get up there eventually get the job done and yeah. got themselves a, a nicer trophy than York won the championship's going to be brilliant next year and yeah. I think you know it, but it's been brilliant this year well yeah but, but, I think, but I think if you look now there's a guaranteed team that's going to go into Super League which you never had it's going to be all championship games that decide it and I, I honestly can't wait now for championship next season because you've got you've got the 14 teams you're going to know all the fixtures for the whole season you're going to be able to plot out what's going to happen you've got the top five playoffs and there's like you're probably looking at there's probably eight teams that'll probably fancy having a having a dab there you play. go you've got James Ru Love Rugby League correspondent just for the championship next year the uh, the and well you know the, the league structure where I think they have got it Bob on is the National Conference League but out of interest just, yeah just just going back to to the championship I don't want to go back to <laughs> it we spent <laughs> enough time no you, you, no no I am going to move on no I've got to move us on <laughs> so so much for this stop clock eh? so we will have it uh, well We'll come back to it. Think about it. Come to it with I an agenda. Well not, I may as well not speak. <laughs> come back to it with an agenda next week. Oh, he's, he's <laughs> on the mic up. Right, okay. Then me, me and you will go through the National Conference League then. Yeah. Um, this is one league structure where I do feel that they have it right. Uh, Hunslet Club Parkside, the first club to go 100%. Brilliant. Obviously, Paul McShane, the coach there. Um, brilliant achievement. And, and yeah, it's just like say, like we always say, it's nice just to talk about rugby. And they play some the great stuff no, as well. That's what the National Conference League is, yeah. And, uh, um, yeah it was a good I game mean, my, so. my favourite player, and it's also because he's on this Barla tour and I'm likely to be uh, you know, pretty close to him for a couple of weeks in November, Jamie Fields. He's a brilliant player, great guy. Big, know, uh, big as a house, so skillful. I mean, he's not playing pro rugby somewhere, he's unbelievable. Yeah, I think our reporter called him, compared him to Paul. He made Paulie Paulie look average sized. <laughs> um, no, he's a great player, though. Interesting. He, he play makes, he scores tries, he kicks goals. So, yeah, I've got nothing against him at all. Fantastic. Uh, West Hull played their full part in proceedings. Uh, did well to get back from 14 2 down at half time to make it really competitive. But, yeah. You, you can't stop the plot, it's really for uh, Hunslet Club Parkside, who have probably had a season similar to Wigan in the early 90s. <laughs> well, fair, fair play, it's, it's, it's good for them, isn't it? and it's good for the club. Uh, and they always have a nice little friendly against uh, Unslet in uh, pre-season. Are you back with us now then, Drew? Have you I'll keep, stuck, stuck bottom I'll, I'll back keep, in? I'll keep speaking. <laughs> I'll, I'll almost speak when you want me to speak. Uh, well, in that case, Drew... Lee Miners uh, Rangers, yeah, a former Miners. club of yours. Yeah, yeah, he's playing me, some of my junior rugby there. All right, it's uh, fantastic to see him back. Uh, what were you, a lanky winger? A lanky winger. 
Ball play 13. <laughs> ball. We had this debate last week. Bring him back the loose I, forward, I, ball play 13. I said he's loose, he's loose forward dying out and he, he piped up saying he was <laughs> playing loose forward. Oh, well, only, only people, right, let's explain the full story. People were saying... <laughs> Hang on, I'm putting oh, you on the Sean, clock here. <laughs> Hang on. Clock's going on. Sean O'Loughlin, 13, <laughs> should have been Dream Team, well, he's the only one you can pick. Oh, you on a minute. I named, I named <laughs> plenty off, of loose forwards in Super League last week for you. I named plenty. Um, Listen, I, 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 um, it was a, it, I crunched the numbers. I did the stats. Listen, stop it. It was. This is the amateur hour. Going, going, going well, it is sounding like the amateur going, hour. Going, going, going back to mine, it's, it's fantastic to see him back. Um, obviously, it, they, they had a rough time in the last couple of years. It, they went back down to the lower leagues. Sadly, I think they found their own coaching appointment, didn't they? After having all that success, and then it impacted but, on. But them. now they're, they're back in. Uh, it looked like some good celebrations on Twitter as well. Oh, probably. there were some some fantastic scenes, to be honest. Yeah. And, and um, let's it's, stick. it's good to see that, that togetherness. So, no matter what level of rugby it's at, or when the clip went on Twitter, it kind of went viral, didn't it? It got a couple of hundred retweets, and, and the, ball went, the ball went down, and all the dugout which ran all the way all the way down the line, they were all jumping on top of each other. They all piled on that corner. It was great to see it, and that that's the refreshing stuff that you want to see in rugby league you, you don't want to be talking about not having enough, enough players and all that kind of stuff you want to be seeing them scenes and it, it was just it, it was fantastic and, and uh, it's um, it was yeah, well, well covered as well by free sports so yeah. I really enjoyed both games actually that yeah. were, were covered down there uh, yeah golden point uh, so I think Deacon Monks is the freedom of Lee at the moment because he was the guy that scored in the corner right at the end I spoke to Wigan winger as well, Don Man Freddy yesterday. He's obviously. Oh, he's ex Lee man, isn't he? He's, a, he's an ex Lee man as lad, and uh, he, he's got close friends with a couple in that team. And he said uh, it, it was uh, it, he was absolutely made up for him, and he, he was very proud of his mates for, for getting the job done. So well done to Lee man. It's also very well done to Saddle with Rangers as well. Now after the first eight weeks in Division Two of the National Conference, they were actually bottom. So to climb to actually then claim promotion by beating Wigan St Jude's as well, fantastic. Mm. I see my old mates there, Gavin. Dodd two tries yeah he's going really well I saw him the other week great player still brilliant there we go how old is Gavin Dodd must be what he's mid 30 38 now I think 38 30, 36 37 38 boots back on you <laughs> dusting them off um, now I do just want to move us on as well because um, we both saw um, semi-finals from the Women's Super League at the weekend, didn't we, Drew? I was over in, in Leeds seeing Leeds and Castleford I which are hearing your voice fantastic game I don't remember ringing you up. <laughs> How did that happen? It's because you're famous now, Dave. I'm infamous, yeah. more like. <laughs> Jim, uh, say I'll, nothing. I'll, <laughs> I'll speak about my game first. Uh, I was at Robin Park Arena for uh, Wigan Women versus St. Helens Women. And it was a really good, enjoyable game. We, was on, we were speaking before about how good uh, Wigan's defence were in the men's game, but the defence in the women's game were fantastic from both teams. There wasn't a try scored in the in the second half. Uh, a few big big hits going in. It got fiery as well. A little, uh, not not yeah, just a, a few coming together. There's no 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 front, uh, punches being thrown, but uh, a couple a couple of coming together. It was a real derby game. They they got carried away with each other. They they got stuck in. Uh, Fantastic to see and a crowd of around three fifty as well. I think it were at Robin Park. Isn't that the third time Good as well see. that we're going to beat St Helens at that level this season? Yeah, yeah. And to, to be fair to the Warriors and, I, and people will say it's biased, but they know how to win derby games. No, no matter what age it's at, the under 19 is exactly the same. Um, they know how to win derbies. It's it is that winning culture. It's they, they, they do have something special at the club with that culture, and, and they know how to win. They don't want to win big games. I also saw a fantastic game. There was a, a really young Castleford side. I think the oldest player was Emma Slow, who started the game, who's 29. Everybody else mm. is like late teens. Um, and they gave away so much in size but it was described by my co-commentator on the Hour League app the like Yorkshire Terriers at the Castleford side and they were they swarmed around the players the defence was superb had so much energy I really really enjoyed the quality of the game Cast led 6-0 at half time Leeds come back with a brilliant second half performance scored five tries second half including a, a long ranger from Charlotte Booth who's a beast 
an absolute beast out there in the centres. So, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, now women's rugby progresses from this because that was my first test. I want to see more. Mm. Oh, it was absolutely fantastic. Probably about between four four fifty, the crowd over in Leeds as well. So again, very very encouraging. And uh, the show in the finals, both for the championship involving Lee Miners and Stanningley. And uh, for the Women's Super League Grand Final, uh, um, the old Leeds and Wigan getting together again. Let, let's give credit to, to Lee Miners and Stanley as well. The, the two notorious amateur clubs, they, they beat... Notorious? W- What's notorious about them? Yeah, well, they're, 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 they're quite well known. They're big names in the amateur game. That's not notorious, though. It doesn't mean you've got not- notoriety. <laughs> <laughs> Well done to both. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they, they, they beat Wakefield, Wakefield Trinity and uh, Hull FC. Yeah, so and especially when, when Wakefield finished top of that division as well. So they had their own yeah. St. Helens moment, yeah. really, didn't they? Mm. And getting knocked out by the fourth place team. I hope they celebrated team. it. Did they get a shield? Oh, I think everybody's there was, got there was shields. Because there, there was a little bit of fuss, wasn't there? Because Wakefield had finished top. And I know there was a bit of, there was a bit of trouble at... Um, there was a bit of trouble at, at one of the late games, was it? The Stanley because Witness played Stanley, and there was a little bit of trouble because I think they needed to win by fifty-three to finish top. Oh. There was only a two-point difference between yeah. the sides in point difference. Yeah, yeah, and there was all sorts of dramas going on with that. So um, they demanded Stan- a recount. So I think <laughs> obviously Stanley have done well because obviously they, you know, they've done well to get to the final because I think they were a bit miffed not to finish top. So I think it's nice that we've you know acknowledged the women's game as well, and um, I look forward to finding out plenty it's, more. It, uh, it's a big opportunity really because obviously women's sport is in a place where, um, you know people want to give it coverage and I think I think rugby league needs to do more to try and get it out there a bit more because you could get a deal with a, a broadcaster or something just to show it you know obviously it's good the RFL are doing it through the R League app I guess but the, I think that's a big opportunity for rugby league to like almost hit the market with it now because women's sport is attractive to, to people at the moment so why not get in there as early as possible the good thing is as well with the with women's sport is everybody's a similar sort of size and I mean, I mean that in the nicest possible way as well, because you know you get like um, with the men, men's league, you get eighteen stone prop forwards and six foot six players, don't you? And generally in the women's game, they're all of a similar sort of stature. So I, I really you like don't that. Get any like mismatches? As much mismatch? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. But you do get the big hits. I mean, I'm sure you saw a few, yeah, didn't you, Drew? Yeah, so, uh, so. Uh, Vicky Whitfield for the, the Saint Helens prop, but she was great. She. She stormed through the the Wigan line a couple of times, and for Wigan, Gemma Walsh at half back as well. She she was the the star of the show, just ran the game really well. Uh, she got a lot of experience as well. She came out of retirement to play for Wigan this year, and uh, she's she's still got it because uh, she ran the show. Now, because you don't like Australians, Drew, I'm not going to mention Courtney Hill losing Australian half back for Leeds Rhinos, ladies. But uh, there we I go. don't know. You know what? You get me wrong. <laughs> I don't I don't mind Australians, but it's. Um, Frustrating when teams don't have academies. So both of those grand finals can be seen on the Our League app uh, this coming weekend. 11am is the championship one involving Lee Miners and Stanley, and then the Super League one gets underway at 1pm. That's just a prelude to the big grand final. Um, so we've only got two games really to preview uh, in this, this section. Uh, can you do it in two minutes? Let's go. Um, starting off with the, the, the big one, the grand final at Old Trafford. Can only see it going one way, really. I think Wigan, the, the departing personnel, James is smiling at me now. <laughs> but, um, I, I, it's, I, it's, 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 yeah, it's yeah. going to be Wigan's. The, the, Ryan Sutton, John Bateman, Sam Tompkins all leaving the club, as well as uh, obviously Sean Wayne, Matty Peets leaving the club, Matt Bitcoin, a lot of people are leaving the club. They all want to go out on a high, they want to do it for Wayne. Uh, a lot of the attention will be on Wayne. I can only, can only see Wigan in this one. Yeah, it's going to be. A, I think it'll be a classic. But I think, yeah, I, I fancy Wigan as, as well. Okay, moving on to the game. Think, Dave? Uh, I'm not really bothered to be honest. I've got to be honest. He thinks Wigan. <laughs> <laughs> got to be honest. Uh, Wigan, he will, Wigan. Wigan will probably bore their way uh, to, to the fact. At least we've the, got some team play. Well, uh, uh, yeah, next one. <laughs> next match. <laughs> <laughs> 
Shut up, you, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom loop, go right there. <laughs> Penultimate one. Yeah, next match. Next match, this is the game that really nobody wants to play. They have the big coin toss ahead of it. Oh, yeah, which I can't believe they filmed it because that was the most hey, I amateurish thing. No, I've I, filmed a, I filmed a, uh, a coin toss. Did you film it? No, I didn't film that one. I oh, wasn't right. there. No, well, I, was no, over yeah. it. I was over it in was Leeds. Just, it was a bit cringy, the filming of that coin toss. Um, be interesting it's only as cringy as club call. It'd be on. interesting to see what happens because, you know, Swinton have got the home advantage. Will that be terrible? Helen. Um, I know Workington are probably shy of a few players because they've all booked holidays and I think they're still going on holiday so um, going to be a really interesting match I, uh, Swinton are in a real rut at the moment they've not won for quite a while, they've barely won all season and it's like can they dig themselves up for this one last game that they've got to win Workington, you know, they lost to Bradford last week but it would have been at the back of the mind perhaps that they had this second chance but we'll see I'm, I'm going Swinton because a lot of the, uh, some of the working some players are going on holiday, I believe. So I, 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 I don't think that they'll have the the regulars out. Um, and so I, I just think Swinton will pull through in the end. Uh, may the best team win. I'm not going to do an up the town this week because we did that last week. Who are you and because it's Dev? at Swinton and you're there. Yeah, and you, and you, I'm you the, get Who are you predicting, Dev? I think we're in for a good game. Oh, oh where's that fence? Where, oh, he sat uh, on no, it. No, it's, <laughs> this is a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Um, again, this is another one you can see in the Hour League app. I'll have commentary alongside uh, Conrad Anderson. But, um, gentlemen, much uh, discussion has been had. It's been very enjoyable. Drew, have you got over your, um, your quietness? Yeah, I've just got to go and put my dummy up off the uh, <laughs> floor over there. Oh, I thought that was Sean Waynes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's all going on. James. Thank you very yeah, much. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching, and, and uh, we'll see you next week. Do you remember that you can share, like, retweet, do whatever. We want this as far and wide as possible. Should we thank Betfred? Thank Betfred as well. Yeah, thanks yeah. to Betfred for sponsoring as well. It's all right, Fred. I won't forget you. I thought you were part of my dad's biggest fan club. <laughs> right, we'll sign off. Thank you. <laughs> That's getting warm, that. <laughs> Tell Lucy she's going to come back in there. How long did it take you to?